What's up YouTube, Connor with Guns and Stuff, and today we are looking at my Colt 6920 Mod 1, which is what I'm calling it, because I think it sounds cool. So this is my Colt 6920, if you've been a long time subscriber of the channel, you know that I've had this rifle for a very long time. This is the same upper, the same lower, and the same receiver extension. Pretty much I had the front of this rifle redone, and uh, I had it done by Steve at Adco, he hooked me up. So yeah, what I'm going to talk about is, pretty much I'm going to go from the muzzle back and show you guys what I've done. Let's get right into it. This is the Colt 6920 Mod 1. So starting at the muzzle, we have my Sandman K, the Dead Air Sandman K suppressor, and it is a 14.5 inch Daniel Defense Cold Hammer Forge barrel, but I do have the Dead Air muzzle device pinned and welded. I'm not going to remove this because I just zeroed it and this is still pretty hot. I have my old Streamlight ProTac Rail Mount 2 here with the pressure pad on top. For sights, I'm running the Magpul Pro up front, and then in the back, I still have the regular old Magpul flip-up. As you guys can see, I have the ALG Defense EMR3 or EMR V3 handguard. This has M-Lock on the side and on the bottom, Picatinny on the front, and as you can see, it meets up pretty well here. ALG's parent company is Geisley, so this is made in the same factory that all the Geisley mounts and handguards are made on so definitely a good product here i'm sure of it i hope have only added on this rifle for a little bit now so i haven't done a lot of shooting with it thing that's nice is it has a, a qd mount on both sides and as for a sling i'm running the magpul ms4 as you guys see it's just qd right there and then it's put through the Magpul stock, which we'll get to in a second. Optic, I'm still running the Aimpoint T1 Micro on the regular Aimpoint mount. I have the Geisley Maritime Bolt Catch, which me being a lefty, having that a little bit bigger is definitely an advantage to me, I think. I have an ambidextrous safety for me being a lefty. The ALG Defense ACT Trigger, awesome trigger. It's kind of a mil-spec trigger that's kind of polished and it's pretty nice, so... Good trigger there. Again, ALG Defense. Um, regular magazine release. Again, regular Magpul flip-up sight here. I do have the Magpul SLK stock. And uh, regular old Magpul grip that came with the rifle. But yeah, this whole front has been redone. And this is a carbine length gas system. So yeah, guys. Check it out. Pretty much what I'm going to do is just have a range day with this rifle and uh, bring you guys along for the ride. Before this range visit, I did have, oh man, maybe two or three hundred rounds through this particular setup. And today when I was zeroing the rifle, I did have two failure to ejects. So the round extracted out of the chamber, but two of them did not make it out of the, uh, of the receiver. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on that. I'm just going to go ahead and run a few drills here. I'm at a 50 yard range, so I have a piece of steel at 50 yards. Might do some transitions with the, the sidearm. So, yeah, guys, stick around for the little range day and then check out the new Colt 6920 Mod 1. So, just to kind of get warmed up today here at the range, I have a 10 inch plate at 50 yards. I'm going to hit my uh, shot timer on the buzzer. I'm going to go up from the low ready or whatever you want to call it, two shots on the steel. I'm just going to get it hot, make sure it works. One thing I do want to add is since this is aluminum, with, especially with the suppressor on it, this thing gets hot really, really fast. So I probably should have brought a glove, but next time. So go ahead and load up. Two shots per buzz. Six shots, three hits. Not very good. So it's functioning great as of now. And 
I can tell this is already getting hot. Can still hold it, but uh, definitely gets hot quick. That's not ALG's fault, it's just aluminum. Mag's empty. That's why we practice this at the range. Never put empty mags back in your belt. got it hot. Not doing very good today. Alright, so as you guys can see, 86 rounds, no malfunctions. That went to show you guys, don't put empty magazines back in your belt, like I said earlier. But yeah, no malfunctions right now. Like I said, when I was zeroing in earlier, I did have two failure to ejects. So the round extracted out of the chamber, but just didn't make it out of the receiver. I don't know what that was about. Definitely going to keep an eye on that. But uh, let's keep going. Now something I do want to add, I did make this change before I put this new barrel and everything on. I did finally change out the buffer spring and the receiver extension here, but I'm currently running an H buffer, which is what came with my 6920. So just to keep that in mind, this is a new buffer spring. My old buffer spring, the one that had like 25,000 rounds through it, was almost a coil and a half shorter than any other new buffer spring. So I figured it was definitely time to replace that. And again, as for the barrel, I had a lot of rounds through my 6920, just the, the stock factory configuration. Figured it was time to get a new barrel, change up my setup a little bit. I definitely think there are some enhancements over the regular 6920. The factory 6920 is a very solid rifle. Reliability-wise, it was solid, but I think there were things that could have enhanced it. Uh, Free-floated handguard, got it. A longer handguard so you can get your... your non-dominant hand out pretty far get a you know a far grip on the rifle i do like doing that this is a cold hammer forged barrel whereas the colt was not a cold hammer forged barrel and that's debated if that's better or worse or whatever from my research and the time that i spent kind of looking into that i figured the cold hammer forged barrel was the way to go i got the 14 and a half i still can't take that off got the 14 and a half barrel inch barrel with the pin and welded flash hider so that flash hider is really long, so the whole overall length of this without the suppressor is almost exactly what it was as the stock 6920. So with the can on it, I am adding a little bit of overall length, but that's fine with me. I'm still getting the muzzle velocity of a 14.5 inch barrel, and I'm, I mean, I don't do indoor close quarter work, so this overall length is not really a big deal to me. Anyways, let's go on to shooting. So I'm going to do what I did earlier, except all my magazines are loaded low. So I'm going to have to do some magazine changes. And again, we're just kind of shooting the rifle to make sure it functions properly with the new stuff and the suppressor and everything. Just want to give Sarge a shout out for bringing this glove. You're the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
So wrapping up the day here with the new 6920 Mod 1. As you guys can see, I was having a few minor issues with the... I believe it's from the suppressor on here. Uh, I've had... Today I had three failure to ejects. One of them was on camera. Two of them were off camera. It only seemed to be happening on, on the last round in the magazine. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm going to be shooting this a lot more to kind of see what it is, get those kinks out of the system because... As you guys know, I want my stuff to run reliably. So just kind of out here testing. I wasn't doing any major drills or anything, just a few mag changes up on target and stuff like that. So uh, bear with me there. I haven't been out here in a while, but I think I did a pretty good day. I was a little rough at the beginning, but still getting used to this setup. And like I said, as you guys know, I want it to run reliably, so I'm still going to have to do a little bit of tweaking and stuff. It ran pretty good for the most part today, as you guys saw. But uh, yeah, guys, Connor with Guns and Stuff, if you have any questions about this particular setup or anything in our other videos, please comment in the comment section below. It's Connor with Guns and Stuff. Thanks for watching another one of our videos, and we'll see you in the next one.